Well, here we are in Felsted Village. And just walking through this lovely old late medieval timber frame building, complete with Tudor shop fronts here. Uh, originally a guild hall, then a chantry, and then of course in the 1560s, the rooms above became the first Felsted school uh, that was formed by Lord Richard Rich. So let's go into, through the gateway into the church now. The churchyard, with the church in front of us here, late Norman church, but the reason for us coming here, all part of the Wanstead story, is the rich chapel. You can clearly see made of limestone, round about 1615, something like that. But of course, we can't stop, because time is pressing, and we have an appointment with Lord Richard Rich. Many of us have seen the quite modern film, The Man for All Seasons, if you remember when John Hurt played the part of the infamous Richard Rich. And then, you know, what, what was this man all about? I've been to this church before. I have seen this man. I've had a conversation with him. So let's see whether we can get anything out of him. I mean, he can't take me to court, can he? Whatever I say, I can call him anything I like now. So come on, Richard, or may I call you? Of course, I have to call you my lord, don't I? Because you are a lord and a baron. But what on earth possessed you to interfere and, and send so many people to their deaths? I mean, think of Sir Thomas More. He was a man who was like you. Come on, let's be fair. You were a Catholic. You were a closet Catholic for the whole of your life. You really bent the rules according to what was going on politically. And so that you could end up, we know, as rich as rich, as rich could be. But just think about what Sir Thomas More, he was a colleague of yours at the Middle Temple. How on earth could you bring down a friend in such a horrible way as just lying to say that you said that Sir Thomas More would never, ever accept Henry, King of England, as head of the religious Church of England. He never said that. He never denied it, he never admitted it, but he never said it. You basically, in, a, in an off-the-record conversation, just twisted his words, didn't you? Of course you did. I mean, obviously, Sir Thomas More had already, at the uh, pre-hearing of his trial, had more or less rubbished you because he knew that his end was coming. And so I think he, in his own very educated and diplomatic and honourable way, um, tore you up a strip, didn't he? He called you, what did he call you? Called you a bit of a gambler? Then you were a gambler. And to think that an uh, um, uh, uh, owner of Wanstead and Wanstead uh, Estate 200 years later as a gambler would be just as a low character as you were in the 16th century. So we can say, can't we, what, what we like about you. You were the third most powerful man in England in your time, especially during Edward VI reign. But you've gone now, so I can say what I like about you. To be quite honest with you, Nobody really likes you. The people who run the church here at Felsted, they don't like you. Some of them say that your, your tomb should be removed. They just don't like the whole idea of your presence here, um, in, even in marble. And look at this huge canopy. There's even the winged figure of fame above your, your tomb. They're just literally announcing your fame to the world outside England. Everything about you is just... Self, self, self. Sorry, I don't like you. End of story.